Let's just dive in, shall we? Hellraiser Judgment is the long-awaited 10th film in the Clive Barker-created franchise, and oh boy, it's as fun and entertaining as a visit to your grandmother's autopsy. Evil seeks evil. Because good is dumb. Our new pinhead is played by a guy named Paul T. Taylor, and this is one fuck of an improvement over Stephen Smith Collins in the last one. Well, that's not really saying much, is it? I was warned from the beginning that that there was going to be some, you know, fan pushback and people were going to be hating on me because I'm not Doug Bradley. But well, at least he actually looks like Doug Bradley and not like he's about to drop the worst industrial metal album in the history of Western Romania. The rest of the Cenobites are really nothing to write home about, but I'd take any of these guys over a DJ this thing and a catchphrase spewing Borg. That's a wrap. The movie starts off with Pinhead explaining why his franchise has no hope. Obsolete. Irrelevant. In an age when desire has become amplified, but where lust can be sated electronically, we need something more than just a wooden box. Yeah, just like every other religious nut, always blaming his problems on internet porn. Technology may have advanced, but sin remains unchanged. And maybe I'm reading too much into this, but how does a demon from hell know all about the internet? Oh, wait. This story features a serial killer called the Preceptor, a truly evil motherfucker on par with Frank Cotton or Julia. And much less amusing. And he kills people for not following the Ten Commandments or some shit. Yeah, because Seven was relevant 23 years ago, so let's steal from that. The parts without the Cenobites are generically bleh and full of the usual fake-outs and uninteresting twists. Like, how many times can you show someone being gruesomely tortured, only to have them turn around and all that scary stuff just disappears? Like, oh, it was just the Cenobites fucking with me for some reason. Also, serial killers are boring, you guys. Stop trying to make them scary. So why are Hellraiser's 5 through 9 complete bullshit? It's because Dimension Films, in pulling a Roger Corman-esque move, kept releasing cheap and lazy movies as a way to keep their chubby, sweaty hands on the rights for another couple years. You're not the first to say that. And most of these didn't even start as Hellraiser films, but were rewritten from old, unsellable scripts. Got a generic supernatural thriller about a cop chasing a serial killer? Well, shit. Just plop Pinhead down in the end to explain that the cop was in hell the whole time. Boom, Hellraiser Inferno. The fact that Pinhead has been blasted off into space showed that Dimension had clearly run out of fucks to give. But they were at least smart enough to give the creative reins to a guy who did have some fucks left in him. Gary J. Tunnicliffe. If you get a phone call tomorrow from Dimension Film saying, we'd like to make a horror film, we've got $250,000 budget, would you like to write and direct it? It's like, it's a no fucking brainer. So I was like, yeah, I'm in, because I'm fucking stupid. Because I love Hellraiser, I love it. He's done the makeup for every entry since the third, excluding this one, and has also played Cenobites and directed Second Unit. He also wrote Hellraiser Revelations, so... And now, in Judgment, he's a triple threat, writing, directing, and co-starring as the Auditor, a sort of clerk in Hell who processes sinners for judgment. You will be taken to be cleaned and then to the surgeon. Oh, that's that fucking bitch, Jafil. <laughs> <laughs> However, Dimension, in a move that our president would be proud of, compounded their not giving a shit by not giving them any fucking money either. Is that any way to treat an old friend of the family? Well, aside from only $500,000. And I'm not entirely convinced that some producer isn't secretly walking around with $499,000 in his back pocket because of how cheap this movie looks. The sets are tiny and look like something out of a student film. Like this shot of Pinhead here where it looks like he's having a steam in one of those sauna boxes. Then it cuts to the front where I, oh, I see, it's a chair. But framed like this, Pinhead just looks like he's falling asleep while taking a shit. 
Tunnicliffe is clearly a fan, and that's why I admire this movie even if I don't really like it. Judgment is a lot like a big-budget fan film. Too bad it looks like it was spliced together with a serial killer web series from 2010. I wouldn't mind if they kept making more of these movies with Tunnicliffe at the helm, but for fuck's sake, give the man a budget! Fans have been clamoring for years for a proper visit to Clive Barker's vision of hell, and with today's visual effects, it's actually possible to turn the series into a cool horror fantasy epic. Instead of... Welcome, Hellraisers. Invitations. So where does this one fall on the scale between horror masterpiece and... <laughs> well, let me put it this way. I'd call this one the true Hellraiser 5. Just watch the first one through Bloodline, skip to this one, and then decide for yourself whether or not you want to do something actually useful with your life. Bad Panda. Hey everyone, Bad Panda here. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, then why not subscribe for more Obscure Film School and other content. Feedback is always welcome, so feel free to like or comment below. See you next time!